Bibles or stories to illustrate this point. I mean, in the very first book of the Bible in Genesis, we are introduced to Adam and Eve. And they are faced with temptation. And they don't make the right choice. But then again, none of us do. Their lives don't end there, though. The story continues, but we get hung up on their indiscretion. And then we get hung up present day of our own indiscretions and the indiscretions of others, and we don't bother to turn the page. But if you keep reading, verse 22 of chapter 3 of Genesis says, Then the Lord God said, See the man has become like one of us, knowing good and evil. He might reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. So God forgives him, just like he forgives us. And it goes on to say that Adam lives to be about 130 years old. So clearly, his story continued beyond eating from the forbidden tree. I saw this demonstration on Facebook, and I thought that it illustrated a point that I wanted to make. Take this can of soup. It's less than a pound, okay? Almost 11 ounces. Now, if I hold out this can of soup for five minutes, what do you think is going to happen? It's going to start to get tired. But for five minutes, it probably won't be too, too bad, right? But what's going to happen after about an hour of me just holding out this can of soup? It's going to start to get really tired. And then if I continue to hold it for another hour, or maybe three hours, what do you think is going to happen to my arm? That's probably going to be about down near my side. The can of soup didn't change. That stayed the same. But what happens in our life is that we hold on too tightly to things that happen in our past. And then what happens is, it starts to drag us down. The sins of our past, we just can't seem to completely hand over to God. And then there's times when we don't think about those things for months or maybe even years at a time. But then somebody says something, and then suddenly it's at the surface again. And the person who jogged that memory really doesn't even realize how it's impacting us. But there we are, reliving it again after we've buried it. Your guilt has you clinging to that, even though God has already relinquished his grace on you a long time ago. Gloria Vanderbilt died this week, and I was watching some stories about her life. And she was born famous. I mean, her story and life played out in headlines. And a lot of people probably considered her to be pretty fortunate and lucky. But she had a lot of tragedy in her life. Her dad died when she was one. And at the age of 10, she was in the middle of a custody battle with her mom and her aunt. And her aunt won. She was married four times. And she witnessed one of her sons commit suicide. He was literally on the edge, and she was trying to talk him off. And he jumped. And she had to live with that for her entire life. Something she said is worth repeating. She said, without pain, we cannot know what joy is. And without pain, we don't know that we're alive. And there are times when someone we love dies or we lose someone in our life. And moving into the present, let alone the future, seems near impossible to us. Because that person was so much a part of our lives. That person became part of our identity. But consider this. Jesus knew his fate. He told the disciples what was going to happen to him. And yet when they went to the tomb, they were still surprised that he wasn't there. The Gospel of Luke, we know that Jesus addresses the disciples, and he was carried into heaven. And 
and their response was one of joy. And in the Gospel of Mark, they spread the good news after Jesus is taken into heaven. Evidence, there is joy after tragedy. So many times in life, we concentrate on our loss, our sorrow, and our hurt. That feeling of disappointment or anger that we might have. And sometimes it's difficult to kind of rise above that negativity. I kind of imagine somebody treading water, and there's water right up to their chin, and they're just struggling and struggling. I like this saying by Marianne Williamson. We don't heal the past by dwelling there. We heal the past by living fully in the presence. We all make mistakes. We all have baggage and heartache. But the Lord's mercies are new every morning. Lamentations 3. Every day, we get a do-over. We get a chance to start again. I also like this saying, never be a prisoner of your past. It was a lesson, not a life sentence. I want to share a story with you that is a little difficult to hear, but there is a reason I'm going to share it. It is about the Ortegas, and they were celebrating Christmas in Covina, California in 2008. And the Ortegas had invited all five of their children to their home to celebrate the holiday. And so their five children were there, along with their families and their own children. And I'm telling this through the perspective of one of the children, and her name is Leticia. And Leticia had her daughters there with her, as well as her husband. And one of her daughters said to her, Santa Claus is outside. And she really didn't think much of it because in the past, in that particular neighborhood, Santa Claus would come around. And so she went to go get her video camera. And the doorbell rang. And her eight-year-old answered the door. And her daughter was shot in the face. Now, her daughter survived, okay? But it didn't take long to see what was playing out. Leticia's former brother-in-law was the one at the door, and he had brought several semi-automatic weapons to that home. Leticia's sister and brother-in-law had just been divorced about a week before this all played out and nine of her family members were killed. She lost her parents, she lost her two sisters, her two brothers, her two sisters-in-law, and a nephew who was 17 years old. But the reason that I share this is because she said the reason that she was able to get through, not get over, but get through her grief was her faith. She said, I can't do anything about what happened, I can't change it. But I can focus on what's brought to me. And the good that's brought to me, I appreciate. And she goes on to say she refuses to allow her ex-brother-in-law to consume her present life with evil. And I just thought to myself, it takes such a strong and powerful woman and person to not only say that and live her life like that, but also to believe that. And the reason I share this story is to show you that life can exist beyond tragedy. Sometimes it may be hard to fathom, and you may not feel like it's even possible. But God is good, and he wants us to be happy. He doesn't want us to wallow in our grief, but he does understand that we are going to be sad. He does understand that we will weep when we lose someone special or when something bad happens to us. But he gave us this wonderful gift of forgiveness and eternal life so that we can experience joy beyond our imagination. 